Hello world, it's Leo, and I'm back with video number two. In the first video, we created a crypto price share mean reversion system. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link or a bubble right here. And if that doesn't happen, because again, this is only my second video like this, if I fail, I'll put a link in the description below. Now, the goal of this series is to create a profitable crypto trading strategy. Now, obviously, who wants an unprofitable one? But it's likely that we're going to have to create a bunch of strategies that lose money before we finally find one that makes money, let alone the holy grail and potentially buy a private island. Now, I thought to myself, Leo, instead of wasting everyone's time and showing you how to import uh, you know, the crypto data every single video, that's what this video is about. Instead, we're going to import the Kaggle data at one minute resolution, resample it, and get it prepared for future backtesting purposes. So, without further ado, let's create some code. So, the first thing that we'll do is we'll open up Jupyter Notebook. Now, if you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebook, I'll put some introductory materials on how to get it installed in the link below. But, long story short, it's just a web interface where we can put Python and Markdown code. And that's really nice because it makes it easy to see. So if I put some Python code or we're creating some type of analysis, I can explain that analysis or give some explaining language around more complex code right within the web interface. So it's pretty nice. So before we do any coding though, we gotta download the data. So go to this link right here and I'll put this link in the description below and download that so you can follow along with me. So the next step we'll take is we'll import pandas, import pandas as pd, and then we're also going to use zip file. So we'll do from zip file, import zip file. Okay, perfect. So now that we've got our imports, we'll do import, imports, not import. <laughs> now that we've got our imports, um, we'll select the, uh, the columns that we want and create our zip file objects. We'll do zf equal zip file, and then put in your download location. It'll obviously be different than mine. Um, technical downloads archive.zip, archive.zip. And then we'll select the columns that we want. will be time, open. I just got these from the Kaggle description above uh, on the other tab. Open, high, low, lows, volume. Control enter, that seemed to work. Perfect, okay. Now, the next step, uh, there's a fair amount going on, so I'm gonna explain it at a high level, and then I'll explain every line of code, and then, you know, kind of wrap up, explaining it one more time. You know, Python, the thing about Python, it's great, you can do so much and so little code, but at the same time, sometimes it's almost too concise, right? So, let's think about what we're doing. We've got an archive.zip file, and within that archive.zip file, we've got a bunch of CSV files. And each one of those CSV files contains our crypto data with the time, open, high, low, close, and volume. So we want to loop through all of those CSVs, create a data frame, and then stack those data frames on top of each other. So let's see how that works. We'll do DFS, that way, um, here we'll do for data frames and we'll do pd.concat which that again stacks the data frames on top of each other we'll pass that a dictionary we'll do text file dot file name dot split we'll make that with the first element so that'll be the key we'll do pd.read csv so now reads pd.read csv creates a data frame from a csv file but our csv file is actually within a zip file, so we need to use that zip file object. We'll do zip zf.open. That's at the file name, text file dot file name, and then only pass the you know the columns that we want, right? So use calls equal calls. Perfect. Now uh, the next part of the code where we loop through each text file within the zf uh, zip file. So we'll do text file in zf info list. And instead of just looping through and importing every file, we'll check to make sure that the file within the zip file ends with .csv. I believe it does in this case, but you know we'll just add this to make our code a little more robust. We'll do text file .file name ends with .csv. And then CFS hit enter. 
And I made a typo. So let's see, what did I do here? Invalid syntax. Okay. Oops. Okay, perfect. So it looks like it's running. And again, what we're doing, we have, you know, our ZF info list, which outputs, you know, the list of the file paths. And we'll do text file, you know, for each one of those files in the info list, we create a CSV out of them. And then no, we don't create a CSV out of them, we create a data frame out of them. And then we smush all the data frames on top of each other with DFS, as you can see here. And that looked like it worked perfectly. Now, the challenge is it's actually not in the format that we want, right? So our level zero and level one indices are, you know, the ticker, which is great. Uh, but, you know, this, we have this index here that's just useless. It's just an integer index. Uh, so we want to actually change this multi-index to the time and then the ticker. And, you know, that brings me to a point is that any time that we're, you know, coding this stuff up, we want to try to get as close to our data in a format as close to how we're going to receive it from a broker uh, and their API. So, you know, every minute we will receive a, you know, bar and then within, or that, a data, and then within that data, we'll have all of our ticker values. So we'll, we'll set level zero to time and then level one to ticker. Uh, but before we do that, we, we'll, what we'll do is we'll get rid of this index and then we'll reset our index so that way we can get our rename our ticker from index as it'll just be named index to ticker and then we'll reset that back to that multi-index and then time will also make it a little bit more uh, human readable so let's go ahead and you know take those steps now so we'll do df equals dfs drop level. So we're dropping that integer index. We'll reset the index. So now our ticker will be just named as index. We'll do rename columns equal index ticker. Perfect. Now uh, what we'll do is we'll only grab the US dollar pairings. We'll use, we'll use some Boolean indexing for that. We'll do df ticker access the string methods contains USD. So this checks and return, check to see if the ticker contains USD and it'll return a series of true and false values. So that's not really helpful to us, but we can use Boolean indexing to pass that to our data frame. So now what that'll do is only the rows where the ticker contains USD will be returned the uh, falses will essentially be dropped. So we'll only have a data frame with US dollar pairings. And now we'll change the time uh, field to date, even though it's a date time, but and it's shorter and easier to type. So we'll do PD, I'm sorry, df.date equals PD.2 date time. And we'll pass it the time column. And we need to let it know it's in, in milliseconds. We're done with that. Now we need to sort the values. And the reason we sort the values is that we're going to uh, slice, we want to be able to slice the uh, time index. So we'll do sort values by date ticker. So we've got that. We no longer need that time column, so we'll drop that. So we'll df dot drop columns equal time. We'll set the index df equal df dot set index date time. No. Nope date ticker, and then we will slice, you know, we don't want to have the whole data frame uh, just because that'll take a while to process. You can select however much data you want. I'm just going to select, uh, you know, a year. So we'll do DF 2020-0701 to uh, 2020 uh, I'm sorry, 2021, 07, year one. That's good enough. Okay, perfect. And then we'll turn that, hit enter, see if I made any mistakes. And it looks good. So we can see we've got our level zero set to the date. And we've got our level one is set to the ticker. And then the open, close, high, low volume. Awesome. Okay, so now remember, um, you know, we're, we don't have 
they uh, you know a minute bar for every single ticker because sometimes there wouldn't be a trade on those tickers so we need to resample this into one minute bars and fill the gaps so that's the step we're going to take next so the first thing that we'll do is we'll create a new data frame so we'll just call it bar bars bars 1m equal df and that way uh, not accidentally overwriting what we've done previously and then what we'll do is we want to change the index now just to a uh, date time index for resampling. We'll do bars 1m for bars 1 minute. Bars 1m equals bars 1m dot reset index. We'll set the index back to date. So that's the only index. We'll group by ticker. And then we'll resample to 1 minute. And that's 1min, not 1 month. Uh, 1t always works. Now, since we're really just resampling one minute bars to one minute bars, we can essentially say last or sum or whatever. So I'll just do last. And then we don't want that uh, index uh, that we just created. So we'll just do drop level zero. Perfect. So that's step number one. So the next thing we need to do is we need to fill the columns, right? Uh, but we don't want to fill everything. We only want to fill the price data because we don't want to accidentally add volume data where you know no trades existed. So let's do that now. We'll do bars one m dot lock, and then we'll pass all of the rows and the columns that we want will be bars one m dot columns, and we'll do some indexing here to negative one, which will drop the um, which won't add the volume column. So this is. You know, our first column, which is zero, we do negative one, we'll go to volume, and it's the start, so before the colon is start, and then stop, which is exclusive, I mean, it doesn't include uh, this column, so that's how I know, you know, negative one doesn't include, and there's also step, but we're not to worry about that at the moment, and then we'll do equals, bars 1m, bars 1m dot columns again we're just grabbing the same columns negative one and we'll just forward fill f fill perfect i mess up there okay all right there we go now we need to do the same thing for volume because we set you know open close high low we forward fill that and now we need to forward fill the volume, only we'll fill the volume with zero. So we'll do bars 1m dot lock, same thing, all rows, but this time we don't need to pass it, you know, essentially a list of our columns. So we'll just enter volume, we know the column directly, we'll do bars 1m volume dot fill na, and then the value equals zero. Awesome. Perfect. And now because we, you know, change the index let's get that back to how we want it will be bars 1m equal bars 1m dot reset index and then set index and we'll set it back to the date and ticker and then bars 1m to output that and see if that worked and it looks like it did we'll just do a quick spot check we've got the date then the ticker and open close high low volume Awesome. And now we have it. We have multiple assets in one minute bars that we can use to analyze on our hunt for a profitable crypto trading strategy. So if you like this video, I'd love it if you hit the thumbs up button to let the Google algorithm know that this is a video worth sharing. And I hope that you join me on our next adventure as we search for that elusive profitable crypto trading strategy. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next one.